I'm Abe from Skip.Tools. In this video, we'll see how to use Skip to build cross-platform iOS and Android apps using Swift and SwiftUI. So let's dive right in. The first thing you'll need is the latest version of Xcode. You can also generally use Xcode betas, but we recommend that you have the production version installed as well. You'll also need Homebrew, and in order to run your Android app, you'll need an Android emulator. The easiest way to get that is to download the latest version of Android Studio. As you become a more advanced Skip user, you might also choose to open your project in Android Studio to add Android-specific code. Once you have those prerequisites installed, it's time to install Skip. We'll use Homebrew to get the latest version. There we go, skip is installed. If you already had skip, use the skip upgrade command to make sure you're on the latest version. Now that skip is installed, we'll use it to get the latest version of the Swift Android SDK in order to compile Swift for Android. There, we can see that the SDK was installed in the standard Swift SDK location, and there it is. We next recommend that you run the checkup command, passing the native flag to also check up on native Swift compilation to make sure that everything is set up correctly. This can take quite a long time if you do not ha already have the right Android dependencies on your system, but after this one very long time, generally they'll be cached and don't worry, all these downloads won't bloat your final Android app. This command is also going to create and build a temporary app to make sure that everything works correctly. And that can take some time as well. Great, everything passed. If you see any failures here, run the command again with the dash V argument to get verbose output and feel free to contact us on the Skip Slack channel for help. We're now ready to create our first cross-platform Swift app with Skip, but before we do, we need to make sure that an Android emulator is running. Let's launch Android Studio. Use the ellipsis menu on the welcome screen to launch the virtual device manager. If you don't already have a device, use the plus button to create one. I usually like to create a Pixel 6. Select your API level and go ahead and finish. Mine is already here, so I'll get it up and running. Once the emulator has booted, you can feel free to quit Android Studio. If you use the ADB devices command, you should see the running emulator in the list. So let's get started. We can use skip create to create our first skip project. We select the type of project a mobile application is the default. We then select whether we want a natively compiled Swift project or a project in which Skip will transpile your Swift source code into Kotlin. The default is a compiled project. This has certain advantages, like being able to use thousands of Swift third-party libraries out of the box. You can read about the trade-offs between compiled and transpiled projects in our documentation. We then enter a hyphenated project name. We'll use hello skip. The camel case name of the main app module. We can optionally choose to create a multi-module app, but we can always add or subtract modules by editing package.swift as you're used to in st uh, standard Swift projects. We then need a bundle identifier.
This is not an open source project. We do not need a Git repository. By default, we'll add Fastlane configuration for deployment. And do we want to pre-build the project? Uh, that just defaults to yes. Pre-building can take some time, but it's good to verify that the project initializes successfully. So we'll accept that. Install the SDK, we've already done that. Do we want to open the Xcode project once it's initialized? I'm gonna choose no here because I'm gonna use an Xcode beta instead of the production Xcode. Skip will then create your project, and if you've chosen to pre-build it, it'll do that as well. That might take some time. Okay, our project has been created and pre-built. There weren't any problems. Let's launch Xcode, and we'll open it up. So here's our hello skip. Skip has created a workspace for us. If you want to find the actual project that is in the Darwin folder, but let's go ahead and open up the workspace. Okay, here's the project. You can see that skip has created a Swift package manager package. Skip is entirely based around uh, Swift Package Manager, and the Xcode application is just a thin wrapper around your package. Here's the package.swift, which integrates the Skipstone Xcode plugin, as well as a couple Skip libraries in order to build the Android version of your app. Skip does not in any way intermediate in the iOS build of your app. Let's go ahead and choose a simulator target. We'll use the iPhone 16, and we will run our app. Initial builds may take some time because it also has to build all of the Android libraries and so forth, but subsequent builds shouldn't take too long. Great, the build succeeded. It'll launch on the iOS simulator and the Android emulator. Now you can immediately see that the apps aren't pixel identical. Skip builds fully native apps for each platform using the native UI toolkit. That means you're seeing unmediated Swift UI on iOS and our Swift UI is translated into Jetpack Compose on Android. But while the details of the UI may be different, the overall structure and functionality is the same. Users get what they're used to seeing on each platform. Let's look at the source. Here's the content view which is a standard Swift UI view. Nothing here should look unfamiliar if you're an iOS developer. We also have the welcome view, item list view, and so forth. And this is all powered by an observable view model, as you might expect. And then down here we have some model types, and we're just serializing data to and from a file to save any changes. Now it's worth noting that skip makes all of your observables participate in Jetpack Compose state tracking as well. So you don't have to use our Swift UI to create your Android UI. You could choose to create a Swift UI UI just for iOS and an entirely separate Jetpack Compose interface for Android. Or you can mix and match. Swift skip allows you to fluidly move back and forth between shared Swift UI code and Jetpack Compose. So it's really up to you. Now, all of this source that Skip created is really just meant to get you started. You can delete it all and start over, or you can modify it to your heart's content. Let's go ahead and do a quick modification. 
and add a little rotation to our heart. There we go, we've added a slider that should rotate our animating heart. As you can see, this was all just standard SwiftUI. We can mix and compose, as I mentioned, and we have a quick example of that down in the settings view, where we create a little platform heart view, which creates hearts of different colors. We could have done that more easily here, but we wanted to show you how you can integrate a compose view. And down here, we have some compose code that gets inlined right in there. You could call any compose you want. And the skip documentation has a lot more information about how to do that. So the simulator should be launching with our edit. There it is. The Android emulator usually comes up before the iOS simulator, which tends to lag behind. There it goes. And as you can see, we've added this slider that rotates our heart and we get the same functionality of course across the two platforms. Now as I mentioned this is all built around Swift Package Manager. You can add your own Swift dependencies here. The skip documentation also tells you how to use uh, Android dependencies. So if you want to branch your Android code into doing all sorts of platform specific things using the entire ecosystem of Android libraries available to you, that's easy to do. You can also integrate uh, other Swift packages that are either cross-platform or if you only want to use them on the iOS side, any Swift package you want. Now to find cross-platform Swift libraries, you can use the Swift package index, which recently added Android compatibility. So if we look, for example, for a package, here's the Apple's Swift algorithms package. And you go down to the compatibility section you can see that this package can be used for Android. And there are already thousands, literally thousands of packages available right out of the box that you can use in your cross-platform apps. So please check out our website at skip.tools, browse the docs, learn how to do all sorts of advanced things, and happy skipping.